the royal family is above the law. With Prince Andrew roaming around a free man, you might have already guessed that the wealth and status of the British royal family shields them from accountability. But that isn't just an informal arrangement, the king is legally above the law. The principle of a constitutional monarchy is meant to be that kings and queens only rule according to the statutes, laws and customs of an elected parliament. But in reality, whoever's on the throne gets to play by a different set of rules. The doctrine of sovereign immunity means that a monarch is immune from both civil and criminal proceedings as a head of state. And as a private citizen, the king is uniquely protected from the law as well. Police are prohibited from entering private estates of the Windsor family without the king's permission to investigate suspected crimes. No other landowner in the country has that immunity. So if you suspected that illegal fox hunting was taking place in King Charles's back garden, police couldn't just show up and do a search like anybody else. They'd have to ask him, specially. Then there's the rule of king's consent. Whenever a proposed law might affect the royal family's interests, like property, estates, and revenues, the monarch gets to vet the bill. Elizabeth II used this privilege to make herself exempt from more than 160 laws. And, at least until the late 1960s, it was standard palace practice to ban people of colour and immigrants from taking clerical roles in the royal household. To this day, if you work for the monarch, you're literally not protected by the Equality Act of 2010. The simple fact is that having a system which involves the hereditary transfer of power down a bloodline that's been deemed superior to everybody else's warps the laws that we're all meant to live by. How can you say that you believe in equality before the law and have a king at the same time? Answer, you can't.